In this session, we'll create the corridor connection on the east side of the intersection. This will be slightly more challenging than the connection on the west because of the location of the crown. If you remember, when I swept my assemblies here on the west side, the lanes targeted the secondary street alignment and profile because that's where the crown fell. Over here on the east side, the crown is actually one lane to the right of the alignment, so I can't use this alignment and profile as a target. I'll have to create some targets over here. Now, what could I use for a horizontal target? Well, I could use this polyline. That would work just fine. Also, don't forget there is a feature line that runs along the corridor. We could extract that feature line just like we did the feature line right here for the right side edge of traveled way. If I extract a dynamic feature line along this edge, that would also be another item that I wouldn't have to update if the design changes. I will, however, have to create a manual feature line connection from this corner to this intersection. Now, because the elevations, I do not have an intersection here. Let me zoom in and I'm going to create an intersection object snap. I'm just going to launch the polyline command quickly and I'll draw a polyline from the end point here to the end point here. And then I'm going to launch the flatten command. I'll just type flatten I'll select that polyline that I just made. I'll press enter and enter. That is now at the same elevation as this polyline. Since I'm going to create a feature line along here eventually, let's find out the elevations that I need at the endpoints. I'm going to do that by labeling the surface spot elevations at those locations. I'll select the primary street top surface. I'll open the add labels menu and I'll choose spot elevations. And I'd like to place a spot elevation at the intersection right here. I'll press escape. I will then select this surface for the secondary street east approach. We'll open the add labels menu and I'll create a spot elevation at the end point right here. Let me press escape. I will then select these labels and I'll pull them out to make them a little bit easier to read. Next we'll extract a feature line from the corridor model along this edge. I'm going to open the in canvas menu. I'll go to viewport configuration list and I'll choose two vertical. And then in this view on the right, I'm going to click the southwest hotspot. I will then zoom in on that edge. Right here is the feature line that I'm interested in. Unfortunately, my surface is sitting on top currently. So let's select the surface. I'll right click and I'll go to display order, send to back. There we go. Let's extract this feature line. I'll go to the feature line menu. I'll choose create feature line from corridor. And then I'm going to select right here. Now it says that it finds two of them. I'm going to grab the edge of traveled way. I'll click OK. Let's name this secondary street east crown. I'll keep the default style, no smoothing, and I will create a dynamic link to the corridor. I'll click OK. Now you may be wondering, why did you select the Edge of Travel Way feature line? Why didn't you select the crown? Well, I've selected this one before, and what I found is the crown feature line actually stops right here. It's the Edge of Traveled Way that continues on to the end. So the Edge of Traveled Way represents the best target choice in this case. Now that I've created my target, I no longer need this extra viewport. I'll click back in the viewport on the left. I'll open the in-canvas menu. We'll go to viewport configuration list, and I'll choose single. Let's zoom in. I will now create a feature line that makes the connection. I'll open the feature line menu and I'll choose create feature line. We'll name this one secondary street east crown connect. I'll keep the default style and I'll click OK. For my start point, I am going to select the end point right here. I'll press enter to accept the elevation and I'm going to draw that to the intersection right here. And I'll press enter to accept the elevation and enter again to complete the command. Now let's verify the elevations of that feature line. I'll select the feature line and then in the edit elevation panel I'll open the elevation editor and I can see this feature line starts at elevation 102.96 and ends at 102.79 which is perfect. Let's close the panorama. I'll press escape. I am now ready to create my corridor. Let's close up the southeast quadrant first. I'm going to create a new corridor. I'll call this secondary street east blend we will choose the Southeast Return for the alignment. I will select the Southeast Return Finished Grade Profile and the Curb Returns Assembly. I'm not going to be targeting a surface. I will be setting baseline and region parameters. I'll click OK. Here in the region, I will click to set my start station. Since this is traveling in a clockwise direction, I will grab the start station at the end point here on the left. And then my end station will be at the end point of the curve on the right. I will then adjust the frequency. Let's make the curve increment three feet and I'll click OK. Then we'll select the targets. For the return lane, I will click in the horizontal target field and I'm going to select all of these from the drawing. 
As my assembly is swept around, I want it to match up to the edge of traveled way here on the right. And then the two feature lines that represent the crown. I'll press enter. I'll click OK. Now we'll set the profile targets. I will select those from the drawing. It will be the same three entities. I'll press enter. I'll click OK. OK. Let's click OK and we'll rebuild. Let's zoom in and take a look. This looks very good. Let's finish up the corridor by creating the northeast return. Let's add that data to our current corridor. I'll select it. I'll go to Corridor Properties, the Parameters tab. I'm going to add a baseline. I'm going to add the northeast return alignment. My baseline is defined by horizontal and vertical, so let's select a profile for the baseline. We'll choose northeast return finished grade. I will then right click on the baseline and add a region. We'll use the curb returns assembly. Let me expand this and then we will set our start station. The start station is going to be the end point here on the right. And the end station will be the end point on the left. Let's go to the frequency setting and I'll change my curve increment to three. I'll click OK. We will then adjust our targets. With respect to the width, I'm going to select my targets from the drawing. You are going to target the edge of traveled way here on the right. And then I would like to target the same edge here. Unfortunately, my corridor is getting in the way. Let me press escape for a second. We'll click OK and OK. We'll just rebuild what we have. There we go. We can see that we have to adjust the targets for this lane still. Let's select the corridor and then I'm going to push this to the back. I'll right click and go to display order, send to back. There we go. That'll make it easier to select my feature lines. Let's adjust the targets. I'll select the corridor and we'll go to edit targets. I'll click inside my region. For the horizontal geometry, I'll select from drawing. I'll grab the edge of traveled way on the right, and then the two feature lines representing the crown. Then we'll take care of the profile. Same geometry. I'll click all three feature lines. I will then click OK. I'll press escape when I'm finished, and then I will select the corridor, and we'll take a look at it in the object viewer. When I've finished reviewing the corridor model, I'm going to close the object viewer and return to the drawing. At this point, our corridor model is complete. In our next session, we'll create an overall composite surface that represents the entire top surface of the corridor model.